Hmm. Welcome everybody to episode, we're up to episode 12 of the Seattle Makers podcast. That's like three, no, not quite three, almost three full months of doing this thing. Wow. Yeah. We had some it's breaks in there, but it's so it's probably like actually three full, full months. We're going to kick off this episode of the podcast with an amazing acrylic pour video from one of our makers. So yeah, that was acrylic pouring with one of our lovely Megateers, Trey. Trey, the man behind the camera. Also, I'm Ted. I'm Jeremy. Welcome to episode 12. Um, so yeah, that's our first project we're going to talk about. Like, all, all our maker news and all whatnot is internal. In, I can't talk today. Internal this week. Nailed it. Nailed it. Like the nail sound in the intro. We didn't have an awkward intro this week, and I'm going to do my best to infuse the awkward into the rest of this podcast. Every chance you get. <laughs> so this for, is... You go for the picture. There we go. This is the final and product over Ted <laughs> writing. <laughs> over <laughs> what is supposed to be the second thing. Maybe not that one. Let's just talk about the, the cat. <laughs> there I don't know. We go. It's kind of a mashup. <laughs> I'm going to have to do, like, a sample and a, 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 a recut of, like, all the awkwardest <laughs> moments. <Yeah. laughs> and if, maybe that's what I'll do at, like, 20 episodes. If we hit 50 subs by the time we hit 20 episodes, then I, I hereby commit to doing, it like, a <laughs> DJ-style mass-up. A mass-up. Mass-up. No, call it a mass-up. Mass up. That's going to be the intro for it. DJ-style mass-up. Mass-up. DJ mass-up. <laughs> But All yeah. right, back to cats. Back to beautiful <laughs> art. So we've talked a little bit about acrylic slash resin art before on this podcast and kind of what you can do to get that background. The most interesting thing, which you, Jeremy, know more about than I do, so I'll let you talk about, is how he got the separate cat pour. Yeah, so Trey started with a laser cut cat silhouette and um, cut that out of quarter inch of wood, and then he uh, put that into a... I have a tray and poured silicone all around it um, to get the negative. And then he was able to pour acrylic, um, basically mix up, I think it was two part acrylic, and then poured in dyes sequentially, which you saw in the video, and then just could pour that across. And you can do, you can do it a couple different ways. Um, you can do kind of a half stir and get it more mixed. And depending on whether you put, I think it's dyes, pigments, um, acrylic paints they all mm. interact in the medium differently kind of like we talked about with this guy it's like some blend some have a hard border and some are just little flecks so he actually got a lot closer to the the galaxy thing i had in my head when i poured that but 
-hmm. as you know you kind of pour it you kind of let it do its thing you have no control which makes it um awesome and sometimes frustrating at the same time definitely unlike the kind of like alchemical creative edge of some of the arts that you do here where you just got to kind of trust that it, the universe gives you a good thing at the end of the idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the interesting thing was I didn't realize, like you saw at the end of the video, I didn't realize until I watched it that you can like tip your whole canvas to like get your acrylics to move and kind of blend together and control things that way. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was part out of necessity to get it to cover. Um, and then I think I think he also did two different batches to kind of get coverage and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and part of it was I think he flipped it over and coated it again. The cats. I don't know. We should probably interview him. But <laughs> yeah. Um, if we can but yeah, straight like, to get on camera one of these episodes, get a, we'll get the full interview. An unedited uh, version. Don't, don't we have, have the one montage? Of those in here? Good. Oh, here go. right there. Yeah. yeah. Here's the actual here we go. one. So yeah, mm-hmm. this part was a little bit um, rough, but just by pouring additional resin on, or acrylic on there, it it really smoothed it out and cleaned it up. Okay, so it was so this what I'm seeing is actually three pours. You know, there's a uh, one for the canvas, one for the cat, and then one to kind of meld the canvas to the cat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. How long did this take to do? Uh, he's here mostly days I was off, so I think it was like... It's like three weeks. This three is a three-week week process? Oh, wow. If you had, like, excluding drying time, mm-hmm. if you, you had, like, your life was dedicated to this, what would it take to do one of those? You know, if, it's just in case someone watching this is saying, like, could I fit that in on, you know, three weekends, or... Uh, excluding drying time, I'd say it took ten hours. Okay, so like... But that was for three of them. It's got to be at least um, three separate days, right? Because you got to laser yeah. cut and pour the silicone. That's one. Mm-hmm. And then you got to pour the cat. And then you got to... Um, and you could do the cat and the canvas, but then you got to attach them. So it's the third day. If you had your process down. So there's a lot of like... A lot of learning. You got to keep it level. Got to know how mm-hmm. much covers the whole canvas. Um so you're probably at like the first time you do it you probably do three days and you probably do you know two to four hours a day Mm -hmm. like by the time you've got everything set up and done and that sort of deal but you know that's that's three visits yeah it's definitely something we've had interest in we want we want to do more so we'll we'll probably be talking to probably trey uh, (laughs) about, about doing a smaller version maybe a small canvas um i mean this one we did in one night so possible to do it in like a three hour event Mm -hmm. get something going depending on how crazy you want to get and i guess you know once you have the mold you probably could do your pour for your canvas and your well your cat or whatever your mold is for and then it's then you could probably get it down to two yeah two visits i'll try it out yeah cool projects like i i always admire when I do an art project that like I wouldn't feel afraid to put on my wall or like sell to someone, you know, a lot of the things that are first time efforts that I do, I'm just kind of like, you know, this is good. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be good in the sense yeah. that, you know, I enjoy it for a week or two and then dispose of it in an ecologically responsible manner or otherwise. And or burn it. That <laughs> I was kind of <laughs> trying to dance around the fact that I do that Don't. in a lot of my old projects. Um, but, like, this is something that if I didn't want, I'm sure somebody does, especially because cats. And I'm beginning to wonder how much of Trey's cat obsession is cats and how much is capitalism, because everyone loves cats around here. I feel like I'm in the wrong brand. Yeah. We were just talking to somebody about making cat castles out of cardboard on mm. the laser cutter. And actually, <laughs> Trey's got a few uh, cat castles at home. You won't be surprised to find out. We have to do a segment on that. We <laughs> need like point. ten comments below saying get Trey on the podcast. More cats. It's the internet, so I'm sure there's plenty of cat mm-hmm. demand out there. Cat demand. 
This, this is going to be a graph. I have Instagram memes all... Okay. Capitalism. Before, <laughs> before we get I too sidetracked to at this kid, um, let's talk about another insane project. Oh, yeah. Are those spider webs? That's not a spider web. That is okay. a... Uh, that's a piece of uh, like drop painters drop plastic. So this is the back of huh. my pickup. This is what I did to entertain myself on New Year's. I got on offer up and got a free chair and then bolted it into the back of my pickup with the help of several friends. And I was actually able to do this without any modifications to the better frame, which you see that, uh, that Torx huh. bolt there, the silver thing. That's the same one that holds the spare tire on from the bottom. Oh, good. So, you know, the truck can go back to fully saleable condition. After. I don't know if you'd want to, though. I mean, I it's... think you've got a value add there. Yeah. <laughs> Third row seating. Exactly. For it, one. It now seats five. And in Washington, for those of you who are worried whether this project was actually legal or not, in Washington, this is completely legal as long as you've filled all of the seats inside. Oh, all my worries are con are fulfilled now. Yeah, <laughs> and it has a seatbelt. We put a seatbelt on it. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, this next thing is me riding in the back of it in uh, in an alfalfa field. <laughs> it's about a thirty second <laughs> clip great. because as soon as we went away from the uh, garage, you can't see anything besides me bouncing up and down in the truck. How was the ride? It was. Like, we did two things with it. We, like, went through the field, and then we went a little bit on the roads. And the roads were just cold. Like, it sits you so that, like, the top of the uh, truck is, like, here, and my head in the motorcycle helmet, which I was really glad I put on, was, like, the top was, like, here. So, like, all the air from the truck comes right into your chest. And as you see in the video, I made the mistake of not zipping up my jacket. And I didn't really want to like let go because I had my camera in one hand and my like phone in the other trying to get some light on my face so you could actually see something. So I was just like here, just like freezing internally <laughs> as we drove. And no one could hear me because I'm all the way at the back end of the truck and they're in the front with like the windows closed. Oh, so I was like, guys, I'm getting cold. And they just kept driving. And, and this is legal. This is 100% legal. Can you, in the city as well? You could, of course, keep in mind that things <laughs> that are legal and things which you can do without getting pulled over are two completely yeah, separate categories. A Venn diagram for that. Um, but no, it, it would be completely legal. Huh. Uh, some of the police officers I talked to, because a while back I had this question just for the purpose, not of this project, but of if you wanted to, you know, pile people into the back of a truck to, you know, do a street cleanup or whatever where the line is and what i heard was you know seat your young and infirm in the truck in the cabin first and if you take up all the seats there yeah. you can put who you need to in the back do the smart thing and sit inside the bed don't sit like on the side of it where you're going to fall out right. um because the biggest danger with these things is when you accelerate or stop the truck goes and you don't and then you end up on the ground um and generally when you do things like this you keep it below 35 miles an hour Okay. Because that's the crash. So you need a full cab, but yeah. sit back there. I want to see a follow-up of you just sitting there in Seattle traffic, maybe with a newspaper and a cup of coffee. Just like I, I <laughs> might very well video. do that. I'm still cutting up like the entire build video of it, um, so I'll probably put that on, and I don't know if we can... I'm, I'm going to be selfish and shout myself out one of these times so you can see the resulting carnage. But wow. yeah, that would be hilarious. Cool. Sweet project. Thanks. <laughs> Kick off a new year. Now that I'm done ranting about that, let's talk about what classes we have coming up. You too can learn to make cats and truck chairs. Yes. Well, oh, classes. Classes. Yeah, I thought we were talking about the other thing with the, with the one thing. What one thing? The, the gaming thing. The game. Well, of course I'm talking about the gaming thing. Ah. It's not actually a class or a truck chair, but you could game yourself into a truck chair, and I'm sure this has happened in someone's episode of D&D. &D. Yes. So we have a new game, a new game, a new class coming up, workshop, uh, covering all things gaming that you can do with lasers. Um, that is going to be on Sunday the 26th. We're going to have a bunch of cool example projects. We have uh, this Magic Gathering laser cut case 
um, the design attribution is in the comments and here's how it works opens up hold your case your cards hold your, your cards. cards it's case holds cards um, made with a living hinge this thing that's what this guy is called very gentle very there we go um, so you're able to cut enough uh, slits of the wood away so that the flat piece will bend mm -hmm. and that's how this is flat piece of wood that's bending not not the most durable way to get at it but looks super cool and is super cheap so you know if you're worried about breaking cut five more of a showpiece yeah right. very cool I and just then, love the way that that opens sorry to interrupt your diatribe but I love the fact that it opens like non I don't know orthogonally yeah. or whatever yeah, yeah it like this just looks like, like something mouth. yeah from a gaming logo or something you know and just okay back to you very cool um, I was gonna mention we also have uh, you can also do D and D uh, game boards um, we're thinking of all kinds of crazy things with like different levels um, multi levels you can do uh, terrain you can do especially combined with 3d printing there's there's mm -hmm. a whole unlimited number of options pour some resin in there put yeah. some LEDs um, dice towers are a big one too yeah especially if you've got that one Talos and Jaffe alike at your table who consistently rolls way higher than he should that can level the playing field a little bit and look super cool while it does it and keep your dice from going across the table because I don't know about you, but whenever I play a game with dice, someone at the table happens to just, like, wing that sucker, and it bounces four times and hits a wall and goes beneath the fridge. And oh, then... I found it. It's a six. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it, it doesn't count if it's off the table. It's right. more the, you know, you've interrupted the flow state of your D&D &D game by going beneath the fridge to retrieve your favorite D20. Yeah, not cool. Get a dice tower. Get a dice tower. Uh, promo code for that that gets you... Ten dollars off because you are a wonderful listener of this podcast is Gaming Laser Five. Oh, I get it. It's like gaming lasers. Yeah, it's it's like all we speak. That. What all the kids do these days. Yes, Gaming Laser Five for ten dollars off. All right, community health report. Community health report. We have seventy-eight members. Yay! Woo! We have made increases since last week. Yes, this makes me happy. Six members this week. So I would really worried that like there was going to be a slow decline for a long time and i was going to have to blame it on my poor <laughs> podcasting it's like let's see talents. it started right about podcast time you know? yeah you know holidays were up and down and i don't know a lot of people were like yeah I, just, I saw the space and said i'll wait till the new year to join so i think mm -hmm. we've seen some of that i just got a massive amount of people looking for team building events so yeah that's gonna be cool awesome um, gonna, our, oh, go ahead. Oops, sorry, go ahead. You do open. You, you, I'll do open. Okay, we're open 860 days with a goal of forever. And our subscriptions, new metric. Uh, we have 22 subscribers, and with a goal of 500 right now. We're we're looking for. Uh, we want to we want to be mm -hmm. slash Seattle makers um, on YouTube. We have all of our handles up here, so follow us everywhere. Um, and this is always going to be up there. We're gonna. We're gonna do another iteration where it's a little bit bigger. This one's out of cardboard, um, but we are on YouTube, Twitter. I don't, um, I'm realizing my audio is going out as I turn this <laughs> way, but Instagram. I, I think I can read it off the thing. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and in fact, Meetup. Meetup. Yes. That's not Match.com. It's no. Meetup. Although you know, any any eyeballs work. I'll just put a profile up there. 500 videos. I don't think you want those eyeballs, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Check us out. You can see us. We're going to be putting a ton more content up there. We've got a, um internal thing. We can actually mention that. Well, sure. you, can, you can tag us and then. Yeah. We Tagify can... us. We will retweet and shout you out and that sort of thing. We've recently revived a lot of the Instagram and Twitter and that sort of thing as. Anyone who has started a social media effort knows that's often falling down and picking yourself up again and repeating until you find something that gets consistent. So we're on the next iteration of that. But yes, by all means, shout us out. We will retweet you. We will comment at you. We will yell at you at your birthday or any other day when you buy a membership because it makes us happy. Something like that. Yes. 
Um, more coming next week. Uh, we talked last week about doing a design competition for internally between you and I, kind of, on phone, phone things. We didn't do that this week because we didn't feel like we had ideas that were ready to present. But that will be upcoming, and we will, of course, shout that out on these social medias. And until then, have an awesome life, my friends. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Hmm.